Hey everyone. Now, as you know, I've been doing a bit of software-defined radio over the recent few years. And um, the setup that I've currently got, I've got a Raspberry Pi in the roof close to the antenna, so the antenna run can be pretty short. And then I've got it split up into um, four RTL SDR dongles. Okay, so I can serve, you know, four different things from the one Raspberry Pi, and then it just comes down via the network. But there's an issue that, um, that I've noticed, and I'll just show, show you now on the screen what I'm talking about. Okay, so on here, what you'll notice is there's a lot of crap when really there isn't that many transmitters on there. But what you can see is this pattern sort of thing here where you've got three there, then one over here, like three bursts of energy, then one there. And it, it continues on. And it's in this um, part of the spectrum here. But if I go up, go up a bit, if I head up, up and up, it eventually drops off, disappears. And if I go right up to just UHF somewhere up here, it's gone. Okay, so there's something down there that's that's causing all this interference there. So I wanted to track it down. Now, my first thought was, given that it's a Raspberry Pi, that Raspberry Pi is powered from a PoE splitter from the switch. Now, that generally gives good power because the Raspberry Pi will complain if its voltage drops, and it doesn't usually drop. But I am running four, four of those USB devices off it. So what I'm going to do is go up in the roof and power it from a battery pack, which is straight DC with plenty of power right there, to see if that makes a difference. Actually, before I go up there, I'll just show you the SDR server. So here's the console for it. And if I show you the programs running, I've, I've got it's three of them serving, and I've got them serving from device one, two, and three. So device zero is not actually serving. That's so I can just run things like um, RTL433 directly on there, um, or ACARS or ADSB or something I just want to run on there. So I leave the first adapter, which is adapter zero, just to play with there, which isn't actually, there we go, something coming in there. So that's why I've got just the three. So anyway, this one's on port 1234, and you can see I've just got them serving on different ports here. So I'm going to kill off the other two and see if that makes a difference right now. You can see the pattern did change in the background when I was doing that. So when I ran um, RTL433 on it, see how the noise is up because I've just activated another adapter. So you see that's caused more shit on there. So if I stop that, it clears up a bit. So I'll just kill off um, the other two. So 809 and 818. See if that cleans it up at all. Now it hasn't really. So they're still plugged in, not doing anything except for this one. But this, this crap here is what I'm going to try and get rid of with a battery, just to see if that's what's causing it. So I'll just um, turn that off and go up in the roof. All right, now I'm up in the roof, and as you can see, this is what I was talking about. I've got the antenna that comes into the splitter, and it comes out with the four SMA cables there to the four RTL SDR dongles, and they go via little USB extension cables into the Raspberry Pi 3. And here's the PoE splitter that was powering it all. So what I'm going to do is just take that out of the equation, plug the network straight in, and power it from one of these 5-volt uh, battery packs. So it claims to put out one and a half amps, which one and a half amps, I thought it did more than that. So this isn't that powerful in itself, but I'll give it a go. So I'll power it off that, go back down and see what happens. Okay, now I'm back down here, and unfortunately I've still got that crap on the uh, signal here, so you can still see that pattern stuff coming through. But what I'm going to do is um, disable the other two that I'm not not using so pseudo kill uh, 671 and 680 and it just doesn't clean it up so it's still messy um, as you saw though that battery up there doesn't put out much power at all it's one, it's one and a half amps of current so I don't think that's a good power supply either so I still haven't proved anything there because I don't have a bigger power supply to really run that but I'm pretty sure that's a problem because power supplies just cripple things but it could be some funky RF signals bouncing between those um, RTL units, but I'm going to try something else now on this computer down here with the RTL adapters uh, plugged straight into the computer here. All right, down underneath the desk, I've got this um, cable run that comes from the other disco antenna because I've got the two on the roof, and I've just got that splitting up between an RTL SDR dongle here and my Hack RF. Obviously, I don't transmit on that while it's set up like this, and that's why I had some others down here. But these, this is plugged directly into the computer. Um, which obviously has decent power supplies and not just running off a little Raspberry Pi thing. So I'll show you how this looks. 
All right, so now it's just using that RTL dongle that's directly connected here. Um, as you can see at the top here, it's not going via the network. And you can see that that weird pattern stuff has gone. There's still other stuff, and there's a signal easily seen there. But um, it's certainly a lot clearer than, than the one I've got set up uh, from the roof. So you might think, well, why have I got that set up then, if I know that's a problem? Well, the thing is, it still serves a purpose. It's convenient to have them up there, because what I really use it for the most is just listening to digital radio on different computers around the house. Like this one, I can bring up digital radio on there while I'm doing other things with the local one here, actually looking for signals. Um, might be in the garage with the radio out there. So it does serve a purpose. And as you saw, in different frequency ranges, it's fine. So it does serve a purpose. It's just something to keep in mind. Now I've got something else to show you here. I've got an old ICOM PCR1000. I think that was the model number. Um, this is a ICOM make radios, of course. And this is an old one. I've had this for like 20 years or something. This is way back before software defined radio, but this was their software controlled radio and it used just a um, good old fashioned serial port, if you can see that in there. And these days just got a USB to um, serial RS-232 adapter there and control it um, by the command line on, on Linux there. But what I've brought this up for is because the power supply that came with it is one of these here. It's a 12 volt power supply. And it weighs a bit. Now there's other 12 volt supplies like this. You could have, you've probably seen these everywhere. So they weigh really nothing and this weighs a lot more. And the reason is because this is a transformer. So it's got iron, an iron core in there with windings around it to, um, to bring down the voltage from 240 to 12. This works as a um, switch mode power supply. So this sort of does it by uh, using duty cycle variation. So because it, they're also called chopper power supplies. So it produces very uh, square wave stuff in the process. And as you've, if you've seen my really old videos, you'll know that whenever you've got square waves, you've got harmonics. So that's not good for a radio system. So that's why a real radio comes with a, um, a real transformer for the power supply. Because no matter what, if it's radio or anything really, if there's funky things going on, you always got to look at the power supply because they're critical pretty much for any circuit really. Right, so as I said, it's still got its uses. Um, I, I can play radio out here in the garage and at various other computers around the house, and that's really what I use it for the most. Save having an SDR dongle on every computer, I can just access them over the network. So anyway, that's it for now. Till next time, take it easy.